Right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, Joe, are you ready to go? Joe? All right, we'll give him a minute or two. I'm here. This is right. Joe. The floor is yours, sir. Okay. So I'm going to, I'll put the, this, uh, uh, my document back up on the screen. Okay. So, uh, we have walked through all, you know, or at least a ton of different issues, uh, that were, uh, that I can think of that, uh, really required decisions of some sort. Uh, so this table, and I walked you through how this table relates to those very dis various discussions before we got off the call. So I want to highlight a couple of things and then kind of open it up for discussion. So one in the scenario 11, the green one at the bottom there, that most closely associates with the proposed, the straw proposal uh, that uh, we discussed uh, the last couple of meetings. And I want to say at least people, I think in the evaluation advisory group or who have worked with me on empower over the years know that I'm, uh, I'm pretty unpredictable. You know, never know whether I'm going to say a number should be higher or a number should be lower. And in fact, from one day to the next, you never know uh, what I'll say. And I say that uh, to point out that when I put the straw proposal together, I was not trying to make a number uh, be anything. I was putting together what I was hearing from the group uh, were the general sentiments that I was hearing and there were no, we didn't have any official positions, but, and that includes on the 1% discount rate. And so I'm a little, uh, well, I would hate as, as an analyst, I would avoid with a passion going and deciding what inputs and methods and all that. And, uh, and if our evaluators on for empower went and said, here's our methods, Here's the assumptions we're using. And then we got numbers out and they said, oh, we're not going to use that because it's too high or too low. Uh, that would be, uh, that would go nowhere uh, with us in the uh, evaluation advisory group uh, for Empower. And, uh, but in some ways, uh, so I'm a little concerned that that's what uh, could be happening here. Uh, but uh, so I, I just flag it because if we're, uh, I guess my main point is if we're just, uh, if, if people have a gut feel for what the emissions benefit should be, whether it's relative to the avoided energy costs or relative to some other number, uh, then we should get that on the table, right? Because, uh, and, and we probably should, we don't need to do all this other work. We can just put the numbers out on the table, negotiate them, figure out where everybody will be unhappy. And then we'll know we got the right number. And, uh, uh, and then we just say it was a negotiated number. And so I think that would be more transparent than, for example, going, doing all this analysis, coming up with a gut number, changing our assumptions to get the number that we think is right. And then saying in our analysis, this is because we use a vert, a, you know, and COBRA and uh, interagency working group, social cost of carbon and at a 3% discount rate, you know, and, and act like uh, the, that was really what was driving our numbers when actually the end result was driving it. So that's, that's my, you know, first, uh, I guess, uh, uh, comment on things. So that number is very high that, as you can see, the one ninety nine eighty five. that's $20, that's 20 cents per kilowatt hour. As I said, uh, before we left the current avoid combined avoided energy and capacity cost is around $60. Um, so that's, uh, uh, it's a huge number for me. I don't care. Um, the climate is either, you know, the climate we're, we're, is uh, either important and future generations are important or they're not. And, you know, that's that's a decision. Uh, that number comes out of those kind of uh, assumptions. The other green line is the MDE. Uh, so we've got a proposal, I think, by the, the advocates uh, and Jim Gravatt have been pushing for leaning on policy and at least for emissions. Uh, it seems like the GGRA is the primary policy, although I know there's some still some discussion earlier about how we prioritize and decide what uh, what's important, what's not, what's relevant, what's not. Um, 
but just keying off of the discussions that I heard so far, uh, we put this scenario together for the MDE, I'll call it the, the scenario three is the MDE GGRA scenario, but you can, that's based on a 3% discount rate. It's a global a benefit boundary. Now, this is what we had last night. Um, and then, uh, and it, we also assumed a global criteria emissions benefit. And you see, when we do that, we got a relatively low social cost of carbon. We're not much higher than we already are, in, in fact. Uh, and then we get, you know, most of the benefits in that scenario come from criteria emissions benefits. So we end up at $82 uh, per megawatt hour, which is eight cents uh, per kilowatt hour. I just, during the break, got confirmation uh, for what I was suspecting from last night that MDE, that the economic analysis is using, uh, was not using, however, a global uh, criteria emissions benefit. It's using a Maryland state line emissions benefits, only benefits that accrue to people living in Maryland. So if the emissions land on someone in Jersey, New Jersey or Delaware, it doesn't matter. So I just quickly went and did a new scenario, which is the second from the top here in yellow, which I'm, which is the, I called it the MDE, the scenario MDE, which is, you know, my, uh, at least based on what I'm seeing, uh, what the numbers would look like if we used the underlying assumptions that are used in the MDE GGRA analysis, that is the 3% discount rate, global social cost of carbon, Maryland PJM, uh, state line, uh, boundary, uh, and then we're at $26 a megawatt hour, uh, which is uh, 2.6 cents per kilowatt hour. So I don't think I need to say any more. I'm just going to stop right there and see where people are at. All right. Anyone have a reaction, response to Joe's uh, scenarios? And tirades. I wasn't going to say that. Your words, not mine. <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. Jump in, please. Yeah. Hey, thanks. Um, Mark Stewart, MDE. So the, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm coming up to speed myself on how Resi, the Regional Economic Studies Institute, calculated the, the economic benefits for the GGRA plan. And I, you know, I think there's a lot of value to the conversation that this group was having before the break about um, the fact that the, these the, the there's a cost of emissions that clearly goes beyond state borders, and it's it's interesting to me as I'm learning about the GGRA plan. And, and note, I'm only four months into this job, so I wasn't involved with developing the plan, which is, you know, why I'm coming up to speed on it. But the, um, you know, th th that we use different boundaries um, for, for you know, greenhouse gas emissions versus criteria emissions is just interesting to me. So I, I, anyhow, the point being that, that I, I guess I wouldn't necessarily encourage this group to be beholden to the RESI approach to the economic benefit analysis that exists in the GGRA plan. The, the GGRA plan needed to, and RESI, you know, analyzed impacts economic impacts within the state because that's the legal requirement they, they need to know if there's going to be a, a net economic the ggra law requires that the ggra plan create a net economic benefit for maryland right so that's why they they looked at it in that way um but i don't know it, it seems unnecessarily restrictive for for you all to say oh well therefore we should use that same methodology for looking at the benefit of reducing criteria pollutants, which obviously have health impacts to people in Maryland and beyond. So just putting that out there. All right. Thanks, Mark. Anybody else? All right. Um, not a ton of reaction there for you, Joe. OK. So uh, how do you want to, uh, I guess, so? I, uh, well, could we try to get a feel for, are people fully, uh, feel fully informed about all these topics and up to speed and 
any silence that we're hearing <laughs> is driven by uh, just you know not having an opinion or something, or is it uh, is is it driven to some is is there some silence driven by not understanding what we're talking about in various contexts or feeling like you you're not quite up to speed because I can deal with the first, the latter one if people are not feeling up to speed and we need more discussion I could we could either do it now or I can set up uh, some hourly uh, dirty air call in shows you know uh, next week uh, for people to call in and uh, you know you can we did this for uh, the uh, lighting EUL discussions last spring and I think it really helped uh, at least some people uh, understand and get more comfortable with what we were doing. I'm going to go out on a limb and say there's probably a little bit of everything in there. I know this is the first time folks have been seeing this, and I'm not sure how much time they've had to digest it. I also realize we're going to have to come back and uh, go over this again when people have, uh, I guess, more more of an opportunity to digest it and uh, come down with an opinion one way or the other. Um, my dog, I got to let my dog out. I'm sorry. <laughs> My apologies. All right. Um, he was scratching at the door there for a little bit. All right. Um, I'm sorry, Joe. Did, did I miss anything? Uh, no, we uh, <laughs> we were just, you know, listening to you. Go let your dog out. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, all right. Any any thoughts? I mean, obviously, I know people need more time now. Of course, he wants to come back in. He can wait. Um, anybody want to weigh in? I think Chris Nemi, I know, usually would uh, weigh in with something, and he's, uh, uh, I think he's gone till two. Okay. All right. Well, I guess um, I guess we can just plan on revisiting, you know, um, topic eight and all the all the information that you provided. Um, I, I guess next week, hopefully, if folks, have, if that's enough time for folks to digest this and come back with either uh, yay or nay or somewhere in between. Unless anyone objects to that. Or we could just adopt whatever Joe wants to do since no one's responding. <laughs> That's um, my vote. There we go. There's someone who spoke. Yeah, Judge, <laughs> Judge McLean, I, uh, this is Emily with OPC and, and the EIC. Um, I just wanted to say I think that makes sense. I think people, this is just a lot of detail to absorb, yep. and we haven't had a lot of time. So I think yep. no problem. Uh, I'm guess I, I certainly OPC, and I'm guessing other parties would benefit from having you know at least the week to kind of review everything, ponder, and, sure. and no, report and, back. And that's, and that's uh, uh, fine, uh, obviously. Um, uh, I guess we, we'll we'll just plan on trying to I guess maybe revisiting this next week. Hopefully, folks will have uh, have a um, uh, more detailed position um, than they do now. Um, Joe, do you want to move on? You want do you have anything else to cover on this, or before you move on to, um, or is that everything you wanted to cover today? I think that was everything I had. I could okay, you know, or so pine on anything else you want to talk about, but. <laughs> Um, I, I uh, uh, will, uh, is, uh, just to confirm, so I'm going for next week before the next Thursday meeting, uh, we'll schedule kind of random timed one hour sessions for people to just call in. These will not be expect, expecting any critical mass or anything. It could be one person, it could be zero, no problem. Um, and then uh, people can call in and ask questions about any of this. All right. All right, that 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 sounds uh, like a good idea. I, I appreciate you th appreciate that offer, and I hope uh, folks will take you up on on that. Um, in terms of next week, Joe, I know we. Th I, I I appreciate the overview for for these items. Um, do you envision? Like obviously, a lot will depend um, on the discussions, um, but do you envision us being able to move on to? items 10, 11, 12, or anything like that. I just want to know, I want, I want to tell people what they should be prepared to discuss. Yeah, I think we talked about people sending uh, documents or supporting uh, 
or, or, or uh, uh, positions or uh, and supporting documents related to other non-energy benefits. You did. You raised have, that last uh, last meeting, and uh, I, I gl I'm glad you brought that up. I had that as a note to remind folks uh, to do that. So, so, um, so, is, uh, so maybe just uh, revisit uh, eight, nine, uh, and be prepared to talk about ten. Yeah, if there was critical mass of documentation supporting information related to a particular non-energy benefit. Uh, you know, we could talk about that. We're not going to get through all the non-energy benefits, but sure. uh, we might be able to get one or two. And uh, it really depends on how just, you know, I, I don't know whether people go, people could go offline and get agreement on, on the crate, on the uh, emissions benefit. Are you still there, Judge? Yeah. Oops. Yeah, Judge McLean, I think, fell off the call. Okay. I think where we were going was um, the documentation, uh, supporting documentation for non-energy benefits. I think December 7th was what was said the last meeting, that any of that documentation was to be submitted for the next meeting, which would be the okay. 9th. Okay. So I think I guess the answer to the judge's question, what we'll get through next week, it really depends on where people are landing on the emissions benefit. I would say the emissions benefit is number one in terms of magnitude of things that we're talking about. Uh, and that uh, we got it. This is the one that has to be decided, and uh, then we can turn to any other non-energy benefits that people want to discuss, or you know. And I'm happy. I I'm perfectly comfortable kind of doing that, uh, you know, on the fly, uh, if we have time and people come in, you know, and want to make a case or whatever. I'm comfortable having all those discussions. Anytime. Joe, I'm sorry if somehow I got kicked out of the meeting. Yeah. Um, could, could you just kind of go over what you just said? Yeah. I, I apologize. Yeah. I'm basically just saying that I think next, uh, Christine pointed out that seventh is our deadline for people to submit uh, non-energy benefits uh, uh, documentation and okay. you know, uh, ideas. And that uh, I don't know whether we'll get to it in the meeting next week. It depends on how the, the emissions benefits go. I think emissions benefit is priority number one. There's no use skipping over it. And all these topics will be lost. They won't be fresh in people's minds if we, you know, delay this. So, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, maybe uh, everybody gets together offline and goes has some beers or something and and decide and comes to an an answer and and we'll have a five minute discussion next week. And in which case, and I am comfortable, uh, Judge, with whatever even stuff coming late or whatever. I can I've, I'm familiar enough with all the non energy benefits that uh, I'm not worried about me needing you know a week to prepare or anything. I, okay. I can respond on the fly. All right, um, if needed. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I do like the idea of uh, the non-energy benefits being submitted on the seventh, um, and we also need to work on um, our qu Dylan's quadrant um, with the high, low, and medium, uh, high, medium, and low um, importance of relevance and weight. But that's not due till the thirteenth. So just something else to think about. So. So for next week, we'll plan on doing, we'll revisit eight and nine. Hopefully uh, everyone will have some more information to um, share. And uh, if we have time, we'll touch on the uh, non-energy benefits. All right. Good. All right. Thank Thanks you. again, Joe. I, uh, I know everybody really appreciates your help on this. No problem. All it's right. my job. Thank you. All right. Bye. All right. Enjoy your weekend, everyone. You too. Thank you. Thank you.